Hi, Mr. Simon Williams. I'm your biggest fan in the whole world. Mr. Mike Zalazny from Las Vegas, National Master. Um, and I want to tell you that I've been playing all your openings. And two weeks ago, I actually purchased your course on chessable.com, uh, the company I actually work for as a programmer, on Jabawa London. And I played it very successfully. I watched one hour of your short and sweet course in 30 minutes on 2x speed. It took me 30 minutes, and then I went over 22 lines, and I was ready to go. I beat my opponent in 18 moves. That went very, very well. So I figured in our chess club, Today I was playing a very promising young kid who is 1800 rated, only 11 years old. And he said, you know what? This kid's been learning Sicilian. He's a smart, bright kid. He knows all the lines. Let me surprise him a little bit. Let me see how can he handle the Ginger GM special. And can he, can he handle the Gary the pawn? Can he handle the H pawn? So I started with D4. <laughs> D4 because you taught me how to play that. And my opponent played d5. I said, fine, fine. Let me get this knight in a little bit. Knight f6. And then I'm just, look, I'm just following my teacher. Bishop f4 is where it's at. This guy, however, <laughs> he knows what's up. He knows this. We come in at him with knight b5 idea. We try to <laughs> get this pawn on c7. So he plays a6. Very clever. Very clever. <laughs> okay, fine. We play e3, getting some ready to slip up some pieces. And he plays bishop f5. Oh my god, I watched your course. I watched your course and I remember that game of Howell against Gary Kasparov and you told me the move is f3. This is how David Howell crushed Gary Kasparov in that secret game in Croatia. Probably, probably was played in the ancient castle. That detail you forgot, but that's very important. Uh, e6, and at this point I go g4, trying to chase his bishop. My opponent goes bishop g6, I go h4, threatening to win that bishop. He plays h5. He wants to fight for, for the space on the king side. I said, fine, I will kick your knight. Knight goes to d7. And at this point, just like you taught in your course, I'm trading a very important piece that black has this, this uh, bishop on g6. So we traded pieces, we traded pieces, and he goes c5. And I was like, this guy knows what he's doing. This is a good move. At this point, I, do, I wasn't sure how to handle this. I considered taking. I was like, you know what? I'm just going to stick to the basics. Develop my knight. And he plays c4. This fellow is very aggressive. He's trying to win my queen. I mean, I move my queen away. Queen to d2. He goes b5. I was like, what's going on here? This guy's trying to make me. He only has one piece out. What's going on? It's like, it's not how you're supposed to play chess. But I got a little bit, a little bit concerned. So, I'm not ready to castle yet, I play knight to g3, uh, he goes knight b6, and tries to play b4, that type of stuff, and at this point, I said, you know what, let me stop this, gotta pay attention to my opponent's threats, so I play a3 to stop b4, all this kind of nonsense on this side of the board, and he continued with knight c6, I castle my king, short, he goes bishop d6, and offering me a bishop trade, you know, like Ben Feingold style, this is something that Ben Feingold would do. But no, no, we're not afraid, right? We're not afraid we can fight this uh, just like you did in your multiple uh, victories over Ben Feingold that I watched. He said, you know what? I'm just gonna be clever. I'm just gonna play 92. If he takes, I'm gonna take and I'm, I'm onto this h5 pawn. Fine, he goes a5. And I was like, what's going on? This guy is not, not castle. He's trying to make me. Fine, I'm gonna go in the center, play a4. And at this point, I think he committed his first mistake. He traded bishops. Maybe not the best. I take with the queen. And you know what he missed? He thought he was winning the pawn. He takes, I take, he thought he can take on d4 and win the pawn. But he forgot And when he takes on e4 and I take with my f pawn, well, now that opens up my rook and my queen together with threatening queen takes f7 mate. So at this point, he probably realized that this is not gonna work. And he goes b4, continuing his aggression. Well, the problem is um, I took, and now if he takes with the pawn, well, now I'm gonna trade rooks. And when he takes, uh, let's say, let me just show you a simple variation. If, if I take his rook, and let's say he wants to take with his queen, uh, now I get to invade into his territory. First, I'm gonna play g6. That's what I thought. And I'm gonna open up a position. And once he takes, because I'm threatening queen takes f7, well, now I'm gonna really get in with, uh, 
uh, queen d6 type of stuff, e6 is hanging, and then I'm gonna follow through with knight f4, and I think this looks uh, pretty good for white. So I think at this point, my opponent uh, realized that he cannot take the b4 pawn with uh, a pawn, so he actually takes with a knight. And look at him, he's uh, been very aggressive, he's not afraid of me at all, he's threatening to take on c2, win a pawn, and on top of it, he's gonna attack my rook, and maybe attack my pawn, and he said, you know what, the point of the chess is not to win a pawn, it's not to win a rook, and you know what, I consider it like playing rook fc1, but let's be honest, who wants to play chess like that? Nobody. So, I remembered that the point of the game is to go after the opponent's king. So what did I do? Queen from f4 to e5. Threatening a lot of things. Threatening the pawn on g7, among other things. My opponent is not afraid. He says, you know, let's go. I'm taking your pawn. Let's stop the pawn. I accept the challenge. I take his pawn. Material is equal. Now, if he takes my rook, I will take his rook with check, and after his king move, I will trade queens, and then I will capture his knight, and I'll be up a knight. So at this point, black has to move his rook, so he goes rook f8. And I think he fully anticipates me to move my a rook away, after which he's probably gonna play some kind of knight e3, but I am targeting this guy. His king is stuck in the middle, and the reason we play openings like Jababa London is for excitement, we don't want some boring game where like we move a rook away. I said, I accept your challenge, sir. Knight takes h5, brilliant move, picking up the pawn, and my knight is invading in his, in his territory. He instantly takes my rook, pretty happy with himself. He's up a rook. We can take his knight and beat only down in exchange, but don't worry. We have time for that. Knight f6 check. Uh, he's not going to sacrifice his queen for the knight, he goes king e7, and at this point, my only focus is, how can I mate this king? So I noticed that uh, if I could get my knight here uh, and deliver a check, then the pawn is pinned, and he wouldn't be able to take my knight, but when I notice this, if I accomplish that, his king can run to d6, and once his king can run to d6, he might escape um, on the queen side. So the easy way out would be to take the knight and play down in exchange for pawn and hope that we can convert that position against this uh, king in the middle. But we don't play like that. We play e5. Shutting down the escape uh, route. These two squares are covered by the knight. This is covered by the pawn. And yeah, we just down the rook. Just playing in the style of 19th century players, or Simon Williams for that matter, my favorite player. And by the way, did I mention that? Um, yeah, so knight escapes. He says, ha, I'm up a rook, buddy. I'm gonna crush you. And he's thinking that he's gonna come here to e3, and then knight f5, and then my queen is gonna have no moves. Well, I would have to go to h7, and rook h7 is gonna trap my queen. Well, there's one thing he forgot, that I have the guy sitting in the trenches, sitting on the bench, ready to jump into the game. He said, coach, put me in, put me in, I want to be in the game. So I go knight f4, and silence. Silence because my opponent looks at me and extends his hand. And I said, sorry, I resigned. Why did he do that? Because next move, we have knight just 6 mate coming, unstoppable. All he can do is to stop the mate, he has to move a queen. Let's say he moves a queen. Now we come in here with a check. King has to go to d8. He's gonna drop this queen, and he's gonna drop all the pawns, and we're gonna be a bunch of material. This is gonna drop, probably this is gonna drop, and the easiest way to win is gonna probably to promote the H-pawn, unless there's a mate. I don't even worry about the mate because we have so much, and we can just run Harry, the H-pawn, all the way up. So, sorry, Mr. Simon, I could not make the chessable meetup yesterday in London, December 5, but December 6, in Las Vegas, this beautiful game played based on the course I learned from you. So, hope you enjoyed this video. And yeah, thank you.
Hey guys! Um aplauso para o Maestro! Um aplauso, um aplauso!